Welcome to this scientific lecture on one of the most fascinating phenomena in quantum field theory, the dynamical Casimir effect. Today we're going to explore how rapidly moving mirrors or boundaries can create real photons from the vacuum. This sounds like magic, or worse, like violating the laws of physics. But as we'll see, it's perfectly consistent with energy conservation. Before we dive into the dynamical Casimir effect, we need to understand what physicists mean by the vacuum. You might think the vacuum is just empty space with nothing in it. But in quantum field theory, the vacuum is far from empty. The vacuum is defined as the lowest energy state of all quantum fields. But even in this lowest energy state, quantum fields are constantly fluctuating. These fluctuations manifest as virtual particle-antiparticle pairs that spontaneously appear and annihilate in extremely short time scales. These are called vacuum fluctuations, or zero-point energy fluctuations. These virtual particles exist for times so short that they're allowed by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The energy-time uncertainty relation allows brief violations of energy conservation. Delta E times delta T is greater than or equal to h bar over 2. This means that for very short times delta T, large energy fluctuations delta E are permitted. Now let's talk about the original Casimir effect. Discovered by Hendrik Casimir in 1948, this will help us understand the dynamical version. Imagine two perfectly conducting parallel plates placed very close together in vacuum. What Casimir predicted was that these plates would experience an attractive force. The vacuum fluctuations between the plates are restricted. Only certain wavelengths fit between the plates, like standing waves on a string. Outside the plates, all wavelengths are allowed. The conducting plates impose boundary conditions on the electromagnetic field. Between the plates, only discrete wavelengths are allowed, while outside, the spectrum is continuous. This means there's more vacuum energy pushing on the outside of the plates then pushing them apart from the inside. The result is a net attractive force. The Casimir force is F equals negative pi squared H bar C over 240 D to the fourth power times A, where D is the separation and A is the plate area. Notice the force goes as one over D to the fourth, so it becomes very strong at small separations. This effect was experimentally confirmed by Steve Lamoureux in 1997 and has been measured with increasing precision ever since. The static Casimir effect is now a well-established phenomenon. Now we're ready to understand the dynamical Casimir effect. This was first predicted theoretically by Gerald Moore in 1970, but only experimentally confirmed in 2011. The key question is, what happens if we don't keep the mirrors static, but instead move them rapidly? And by rapidly I mean at relativistic speeds, or oscillating at extremely high frequencies. When a mirror moves or accelerates rapidly, it can actually convert virtual photons from the vacuum fluctuations into real photons that can be detected. The vacuum fluctuations get promoted to real particles. Here's the physics. When the mirror moves, it changes the boundary conditions that define the vacuum state. A time-dependent boundary means the vacuum at one instant is different from the vacuum at another instant. Now you might be asking, how can real particles with real energy just appear from nothing? Doesn't this violate energy conservation, one of the most fundamental laws of physics? The answer is no, it doesn't violate energy conservation. And here's why. The moving mirror does mechanical work on the electromagnetic field. The energy of the created photons comes from whatever is moving the mirror. The energy of the photons equals the work done by the mirror. Energy is conserved. It's just being transferred from the mechanical motion of the mirror to the electromagnetic field. Let me give you a classical analogy that captures the essence of this phenomenon. Imagine a child on a swing. Initially, the swing is barely moving, with very small oscillations. But if the child pumps their legs at just the right frequency, matching the natural frequency of the swing, they can gradually build up large amplitude oscillations. This is called parametric amplification. By modulating a parameter of the system, in this case the position of the child's center of mass, at twice the natural frequency, you can amplify oscillations. Energy is being pumped into the swing from the child's muscles. The dynamical Casimir effect works on the same principle. 
The moving mirror modulates the boundary conditions at the right frequency, and this amplifies vacuum fluctuations into real photons. The energy comes from whatever is driving the mirror. Let me give you a more mathematical description of what's happening. We need to think about how the quantum field modes evolve when the boundary conditions change. At any given instant, the vacuum state is defined as this state with no particles in the instantaneous normal modes of the field. But when the boundary moves, these normal modes change in time. The frequency of mode n at time t is omega n of t equals n pi c over d of t, where d of t is the time-dependent separation between mirrors. When the boundary condition changes, the field modes at different times are not the same. What was the vacuum at time t1 contains particles when described in terms of the modes at time t2. This mode mixing is what creates real particles. The number of photons created is proportional to versus over c squared, where v is the mirror velocity and c is the speed of light. This is why you need relativistic speeds or extremely high frequency oscillations to get a measurable effect. This naturally leads to the question, what kind of speeds or frequencies do we actually need to observe the dynamical Casimir effect? Can we just wave a mirror back and forth with our hand? Unfortunately, no. We'd need to move the mirror at a significant fraction of the speed of light, or oscillate it at frequencies comparable to optical frequencies. Both of these are far beyond what we can achieve with macroscopic mirrors. Typically, you'd need velocities greater than about 0.1 times the speed of light, or oscillation frequencies in the gigahertz range or higher. For a mechanical mirror, this is essentially impossible. So how did experimenters finally observe the dynamical Casimir effect in 2011? They used a clever trick. Instead of moving a real mirror, they created an effective moving mirror using a superconducting circuit. The experiment, performed by Wilson and colleagues at Chalmers University, used a superconducting quantum interference device, or SQYD, to modulate the effective length of a superconducting waveguide at gigahertz frequencies. By varying the magnetic flux through the skewid, they could change its inductance, which effectively changes the boundary condition for microwave photons in the waveguide. This creates an effective moving mirror. And remarkably, they detected pairs of real microwave photons being created from the vacuum when the skewid was oscillated at the right frequency. This was the first direct observation of the dynamical Casimir effect. An interesting detail. The photons created by the dynamical Casimir effect typically come in pairs. Why is this? It's related to energy and momentum conservation. When a virtual photon pair is promoted to real photons, they need to conserve both energy and momentum. The simplest way to do this is to create two photons moving in opposite directions. The two photons have equal and opposite momenta, so the total momentum is zero. Their combined energy comes from the work done by the moving mirror. Furthermore, these photon pairs are quantum entangled. They share quantum correlations that reflect their common origin from the vacuum. This makes the dynamical Casimir effect potentially useful for generating entangled photon pairs. The dynamical Casimir effect has a deep connection to another famous quantum phenomenon, Hawking radiation from black holes. In both cases, we have a situation where the vacuum state is ambiguous because of a horizon or boundary. For the dynamical Casimir effect, it's the moving mirror. For Hawking radiation, it's the event horizon of a black hole. Near the event horizon, quantum fluctuations can be separated. One member of a virtual pair falls into the black hole, while the other escapes as real Hawking radiation. The energy comes from the gravitational field of the black hole. In both phenomena, real particles are created from vacuum fluctuations, and the energy comes from either the motion of boundaries or from gravitational fields. The mathematical description is remarkably similar. The advantage of the dynamical Casimir effect is that we can actually study it in the laboratory, whereas Hawking radiation from real black holes is far too weak to detect. So the dynamical Casimir effect serves as an analog system for studying quantum effects in curved spacetime. Now let's return to the question of energy conservation and make absolutely sure we understand why the dynamical Casimir effect doesn't violate it. First, we calculate the work done by whatever force is moving or oscillating the mirror. This could be a motor, or in the case of the 2011 experiment, the energy source driving the squid oscillations. 
The work is W equals the integral of F dot DX, where F is the force on the mirror and DX is its displacement. As photons are created, they exert radiation pressure on the mirror. The moving mirror must do work against this radiation pressure. This is where the energy of the photons comes from. The total energy of the created photons is E photons equals the sum over N of H bar omega N, where omega N is the frequency of each created photon. When you account for the work done by the external force moving the mirror, the kinetic energy of the mirror, and the energy of the created photons, energy is exactly conserved. No energy comes from nowhere. Think of it like an electrical generator. The generator converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. The dynamical Casimir effect converts mechanical energy of the mirror into electromagnetic energy of photons. Both conserve total energy. Before we conclude, let's discuss some potential applications and future directions for research on the dynamical Casimir effect. First, quantum information processing. The entangled photon pairs created by the dynamical Casimir effect could potentially be used for quantum computing or quantum communication protocols. Second, analog models. The effect provides a laboratory analog for studying particle creation in the early universe, where rapid expansion of space created particles from vacuum fluctuations. Third, fundamental tests. The dynamical Casimir effect allows us to test predictions of quantum field theory in regimes that were previously inaccessible to experiment. Fourth, there's potential for creating novel light sources with unique properties, though this is still largely speculative at this point. A common question people ask is, could we use the dynamical Casimir effect to generate energy? Could this be a new source of power? Unfortunately, no. Remember that the energy of the photons comes from the work you do moving the mirror. You always have to put in at least as much energy as you get out in photons, and in practice you put in much more because of inefficiencies. This is not a perpetual motion machine or a free energy device. It's simply a mechanism for converting mechanical energy into electromagnetic energy. And like all real processes, it's subject to thermodynamic constraints. Let me summarize the key points we've covered in this lecture about the dynamical Casimir effect. First, the quantum vacuum is not truly empty. It contains zero-point energy fluctuations and virtual particle-antiparticle pairs that constantly appear and disappear. Second, rapidly moving or oscillating boundaries can convert these virtual photons into real, detectable photons. This is the dynamical Casimir effect. Third, energy conservation is not violated. The energy of the created photons comes from the mechanical work done in moving the mirror against radiation pressure. Fourth, the effect was experimentally confirmed in 2011 using superconducting circuits, opening up new possibilities for studying quantum field theory in the laboratory. And fifth, the dynamical Casimir effect has deep connections to other important phenomena, like Hawking radiation and particle creation in the early universe. The dynamical Casimir effect beautifully illustrates how quantum field theory predicts counterintuitive phenomena that nevertheless respect fundamental conservation laws. It shows us that the vacuum is far more interesting and dynamic than we might naively expect. And it demonstrates that with clever experimental techniques, we can observe effects that seem purely theoretical for decades. Thank you for your attention, and I hope this has given you a deeper appreciation for the richness of quantum phenomena.